Sex, porn, love addiction is all about self-soothing to manage your emotions. It got set up back in the childhood development years. It's just not about sex. It's not about porn. It's all about the repeated use has set up the physiology to crave those dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, self-manufactured drugs in the body. It's impacting women, men, children aged 10 to 75 across all the age ranges, the sexes, the cultures the professions. It increased exponentially during COVID lockdown and impacting so many lives. The Kairos Centre has created the first online comprehensive sex porn love addiction. It's a video on demand recovery program which you can access from anywhere in the world and begin to see identifiable changes just within six weeks of beginning this weekly program. Kairos means your appointed time. Isn't it your time to reclaim your life? Bring colour back to life without shame. Click the link below and begin your journey. You owe it to yourself and to others. What about from the perspective, if we add into this, I mean, because there's talk about, you know, um, one of, and, and it falls into the category of, of toxic masculinity, but they talk about certain behaviours. And one of those behaviours is being promiscuous. Um, so mm-hmm. James Bond is no, you know, he's not the, <laughs> the, the likable character anymore. But from that side of things, I mean, the, it, it's talked about uh, um, that promiscuity being not a, a masculine thing. I mean, where does that, because you work in um, sex therapy, that kind of thing, where does that fit in the framework from that? I mean, we, if we look at it from the perspective of, okay, people are going out night clubbing, um, she goes home and opens her legs um, and he sticks his yu yang in there. Does that make him pros- promiscuous or her? Because it, it takes two to have sex. You, can't, you know, it takes two people. Um, but maybe there's a slight yeah. definition in there, but, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, but doing it by yourself qualifies as, as having sex. Um, that's my personal opinion. So where does that fit from that side of things? The, 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 pros- the promiscuity falling into that category of, of um, not being masculine. This is one of those questions where once again, Damon, I'm going to sidestep it as a good <laughs> therapist because. And a good one. Um, <laughs> more the therapist, which is, and what does that mean to you? Mm. And I now entertain because what that question does is to set me up to take a, a perspective, take a role. Then I alienate those who are over here. Now, mm. the reason I did that was, was this. Ah, but back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, James Bond was a role model to be emanated and to be. Mm. Now he's not quite in favor because of pros- promiscuity. Mm. So what do I do with all the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s to the, who are very much, yay, James Bond? Yeah. You know, I because, oh, that's not in vogue anymore, like smoking. You, you, you should have changed by now. Why are you? So... I'm going to keep being molded by society and society's view. Mm. And therefore, what I'm trying to do is steer a level path to say, what does that mean to you, client? What does that mean to you as an individual? And we work with that Mm. rather than give a Gary fix. (laughs) Well, I mean, that's an interesting point. And if we're going to, you know, take it to that, that, that side of things when we look at the history of James Bond uh, and I love that analogy and then the most recent rendition he wasn't promiscuous and ended up dead um so <laughs> how does that all fit together and I'm I'm being a bit jovial with that but we're looking at it you know if we're looking and I was just wondering where that might fit into the the case of of where that sits um because that that has you, come you up. the client tell me you yeah. Dave, if I had you in front of me then I'd be saying you tell me yeah. What does that fit? What does that mean to you? Let's talk about it. Where did you get that? Because you may have a baton that was handed on to you mm. as to how you are holding the view that you're holding, but mm. it may never have been yours, but you've adapted it. You've made it fit. Like if I had a cap, I would, you will fit because my parents, my dad, my whoever gave mm. it to me. And of course, that's how it is. Oh, tell me, Damon, how did you come by that view, though? Let's talk about, well, Gary, it just is, isn't it? <laughs> Let's talk about that, Damon. And is it working for you? Actually, now I've started to shake it up a bit. Mm. Actually, I can hear some noises from my female partner who's been calling me uh, 
and saying and actually yeah now and i cause you now to question some things you may end back up picking it up and saying no it is a fit for me but you are causing you to go on a journey to look at how you came by the view the perspective the pattern that you're carrying mm. do i own it or is it hand given to me and i just swallowed it yeah that's interesting I love that. Is that a case too when we look at it? Because again, you keep coming back to this, you know, these batons that have been passed to us. Um, how much of that, because it, my understanding of a belief is a belief is a thought that you've repeated over and over again, whether it was handed to you or whether you've 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 done it yourself. And it sounds like the the um I'm gonna get the name right here because I wrote it down, the eye movement desize desensitization reprocessing is again going through and and reframing what happened um which is again that process how much of this is about I would that... just it's adding new information mm. so that you look at the totality of what you're carrying mm. rather than somehow i want to it feels tricky to say reframe it because it sounds like I don't want it to get any near to things like hypnotizing or causing you need to forget or stuff. Oh, okay, that's yeah. not I understand. I wasn't does. going there yet. No, that's no I know that's not what you intended, but I just want to make sure it's your audience. brain that's doing the healing. Mm. It isn't the therapist at all. No, oh, and, and I don't think in any case, because that's the whole process, isn't it? You can't teach somebody yeah. anything. They can only learn. Um, but going back to what you were saying, can I get well, you to... I mean, I was looking at that from this perspective yeah. of guys having this um, this baton passed to them, so to speak, and yeah. I love that terminology that you, you've used there. That baton, so to speak, is is generally a set of beliefs or a way of processing things um, that, you know, my, I said my understanding is a belief is a thought that is simply a thought that you've repeated over and over again, and it becomes a belief we think it's true. Um, and for us, it is true, but it doesn't mean it is the truth. Um, and then the process yeah. of of changing that, is it simply just add, putting a different baton in there of, of adding something different? I approach it differently to that, that Damon, really. Okay. Um, and the terms that you use, a belief that you repeat. I, I approach it differently. Um, this is the little Damon, Damon mm. okay? Yep. He's born into this world. And as we're not looking at, at this age, we're growing him up two, mm. seven, nine, up to puberty. Mm -hmm. This brain, I call it a hard drive. Yeah. There's no data on this brain when we first come into this world mm. and we're born. But as we're interacting with other people, the extended family, the immediate family, um, kindergarten, um, Sunday school, wherever it may be, mm -hmm. where the brain is not in, is starting to fill up with new pieces of information about being alive on this planet. But I need you to think it's the five senses mm -hmm. that's taking in new pieces of information. It's what you're smelling. It's what you're, what you're hearing. It's what you're touching. It's what you're tasting. It's all the five senses. But when we are, uh, we will be getting good stuff going on to this brain. We'll be getting neutral stuff, don't quite know. But there will be negative, impactful things. Mm. Now, what's negative to one may not be negative to another, to a twin mm. brother. It may not be. So don't make comparisons too closely. What impacted one may not impact another. But mm. the fact is we end up with some negative, impactful things. The first time we are experiencing some of these things, they're becoming templates. Mm -hmm. Templates are the reference points, but templates are hardwired on the brain. So those negative, impactful things that we come across, he's also going to set up a template as a reference mm. point for later on in life. But when we find ourselves doing a pattern of behavior, mm -hmm. so I'm not with beliefs and repeating beliefs. I'm into actual practice thinking that moves into behavior, CBT cognitive whatever i'm thinking will absolutely categorically eventually become the behavior mm. my thinking will be shaping my behavior and so over time when that template um is looking for ways to 
just manage the negative thing, we fall into patterns of behavior. So what I'm now doing is creating the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And we now create the, the, the hamster wheel. So when I feel, yeah. this is what I do. When I feel, gets paired up. Now this pairing up is something called a neural pathway. Yeah. Whenever we do something repetitively, mm -hmm. we no longer have to think about how to do that thing, riding a bicycle. Yes. Even if we haven't ridden it for six months, you just know and you don't say, brain, this is how you ride that. You pick up your leg, you put it over the seat, you, you just do it. Yes. You change the gears in your car, you stop at the red light, you drive through the green light. You're thinking, what shall I eat for tea tonight? But you get home from A to B safely, but you haven't been thinking about how to drive the car. You just do it because you've now got a neural pathway. So mm. what a lot of us create are neural pathways for mm. how to do life. Yeah, And so it is beliefs. It's the rumination, but it goes on into a behavior. That's why when I do sex porn addiction, mm. I say, look, you don't go and forgive me, people. You don't join a 12 step support group because straight away, please, a 12 step support group is a part of my program. It's mm. essential as a mm. support structure. Do not hear me dissing it. Please don't. <laughs> what I'm saying is that's a step five onwards. First, you've got to look at, but actually, how did I come by these addiction behaviors, alcohol, drugs, porn, whatever it may be? And mm. that's what your step one to five is. I need to understand how I came by these. But also, I need to understand why I'm doing the behaviors. But you don't then go off and try and do change your practice behaviors. Mm. You've got to go after my cognitive, my thinking behind the behavior, because mm. my thinking what's going to dictate what i go on to do so you've mm. got to try and go after changing your thinking mm. in order to then move on to change behavior that's why so many are moving back into relapse because when the perfect storm happens my brain just remembered the neural pathway when i feel this is what i do feel yeah. do do but first you've got to go after what set it up mm. back there yeah. and work through the trauma or whatever the thing is that set it up that got me on the hamster wheel mm -hmm. don't just dismantle the hamster wheel because if my thinking is still defective i'm going to think myself back into doing the behavior i've mixed up a whole lot of stuff there as i tried to to, to bring it out no, I really what you, and be what you believe it's mm -hmm. not just a belief of repeating the belief it's more than that it's you then go on to do and do and keep doing so mm -hmm. you end up with a new pathway